What was wrong with this vehicle? The air filter was missing. This car had three different engine computers put in it for mass airflow sensor fault codes. Honestly, this has been a while since this video was done. I don't remember what all parts were changed on this. But we found vacuum leaks. We knew it was running lean and we had a hard time <coughs> finding out the cause. You see in this image, I'm, I'm starting to, um, I'm putting the air filter back in that was missing. But here's the point, to introduce mass airflows, we're talking about this area in front of the mass airflow too. Is what's in front of the mass airflow something we need to consider? On that particular van, what we had going on was with that air cleaner setup, I can't draw it. I wish I was a better, a better uh, artist. But the setup for this air filter was the air intake was in the front. The mass airflow sat here. And with the air filter missing, that air was coming in and it was swirling tremendously inside of there and it was affecting the airflow. You know, go figure, the, the air filter uh, itself said Vortec. Should have crossed out the C and just put Vortex and uh, that's what was going on inside of that. So that's a factor. Now let's talk about the sensor itself and, and the element. I think the best way for me to do that is to show you this image. So we have a throttle body here and then the sensing element you can see in this in this picture that uh, it's right here. Uh, I wish I, I could see the hot wire in that image, but do you guys understand that the air coming into this throttle body is more than just hitting the sensor? So we have some air that would that would hit the sensor, but then we have other air that's going to bypass the sensor and go around that element. We're not technically measuring all of the air coming into this housing. When they build these mass airflow sensors, which here's your module that sits up here, we actually call them mass airflow sensor modules because it's not a simple sensor. It has a main power, main ground, and there's some calculations built into that that would account for the bore of this housing. If we're measuring one piece of the air stream coming in, say, say this one right here, if we're measuring that column, don't we need to know in a math formula what the other columns are doing? So that's one factor, is the bore area. Another one, check this out guys, watch this. That's, this, this is wrong, this is not what it's supposed to look like on this vehicle. Here's what it's supposed to look like. This was missing from Mario's car. This was actually another student's car in the shop, it was funny. Uh, he was doing something else working on it. There was no one there next to it And I just saw the hood up and it was the same engine So I took his air filter off and uh, was taking pictures and he comes over. He's like, what are you doing? Like cuz I didn't ask him. <laughs> I just went over and took his air filter off and started snapping some pictures of it Because it was the same engine. It was a GM 3800 This was what it should look like and this was Mario's car. What happened here? Somebody read on the internet that the screen that's in front of the mass airflow is a restriction and if you take it out, you'll have more power. Uh, no. What that screen does is it eliminates the Venturi effect that we have when we pass airflow air through a small area. And when you uh, study the physics of that, this is really how the whole Venturi of the carburetor was set up. What we would do with a carb is we would put um, something inside of the carburetor, it was called a Venturi. And that Venturi would create something known as Venturi vacuum. If we pass air into this area, the air gets kind of squeezed and actually speeds up in this area. And then what we would do is we would run a tube in here and put this tube down into a fuel level and we would actually pull the fuel out with Venturi vacuum, that was our main metering port of a carburetor, we used Venturi vacuum to do that. So we have this same effect when we're passing air into this mass airflow, um, we're gonna have that center column will actually speed up compared to the outer columns and it won't be the same airflow in every piece of that bore, okay? So our airflow rates would change just traveling into this. So what does this screen do? It makes sure that every column has the same flow rate. And so the calculations of airflow are accurate 
in sampling, we're only sampling one tiny section of this and it would be right around in that area that we're sampling the airflow rate and that's what the screen does. That's what the honeycomb screen does. There are other types of screens, but the honeycomb screen is an air straightener. But doesn't that also teach us a little bit of a lesson on what's in front of the mass airflow sensor being also uh, important? You guys change your air intake systems, put a cold air intake on. Is it possible that wherever that mass airflow sensor lives, let's say that there's like an elbow here, and this is just the throttle body. Let's say the mass airflow sensor would live in this area. Is there something in the calibration that would take into account the location of the sensor within the airstream itself? Is there some factor in this elbow that's going to affect airflow rates and where you put the sensor? This was actually a bulletin on Nissan's, uh, the location change of the mass airflow by putting a straight tube in was causing drivability problems. Am I opposed to these intakes as a whole? No. Uh, should you do your research before doing one of these? Well, I don't know if research will help you either because they claim you know, some ridiculous amount of horsepower increase. Uh, I think the only reason that they can claim those without being sued is the engines are being modified first and then they're putting these on and you're seeing these improvements. So you see how we can keep from being sued as a manufacturer. You can prove these horsepower gains with this device. You can prove it, here it is, documented. But what's the, what's the fine print? You want those gains, what are you doing to the engine first? You're modifying it. So the factory box that's in the car on a little 1.5 liter engine, do you think the factory box is a, is a restriction in any way, shape, or form? I don't think so. I could be wrong, I don't think so. A little 1.5, we need to get as much as we can out of that. That air intake is not a restriction. So what we have students doing is pulling that box off. And, and by the way, we're pulling cold air in from the outside on these factory boxes. And then you're putting in this little air intake with this little cone on the end of it, right? And where is this, where is this cone sitting now? Under your hood. How is that a cold air intake anyway? Okay, enough, enough ranting on the cold air intakes. Uh, do we have to consider the front, what's in front of these Mass airflow sensors, yes. Do we really need, need to pay attention to this area though in, in here, this, this area after the mass airflow sensor? Of course we do, of course we do. How to install a cold air intake.